Let's get back to Blue Origin now. The launch is back on. We return to our space reporter, Lauren Grush, alongside Chad Anderson, space capital founder and CEO. Any details, Lauren, on what maybe just press the pause button? I think it was exactly what I thought. It turned out to be when something that had originally pushed back the, the launch time this morning. So, it, but it seems to have cleared. We've got a new T minus zero in about four minutes, I think. Uh, let me just check the time. Five minutes, yes. And um, it, I would not be surprised if they had another hold for wins again. Fingers crossed that they don't. Um, but uh, as of now, it seems like uh, all systems go. And Chad, just remind us of the business model here, because this is, are these are sort of short and sweet, 11 minute rides almost. This is more pleasure tourism, but also still understanding the capacity of what humans can do and achieve just into inner or outer orbital. What do you make of what this precedent is for New Shepard and where else it takes us for human travel? Yeah, I think, you know, again, this is um, a small vehicle. It's going to suborbital space, just basically kissing the edge of space and coming back down. And um, and so I think that it's really kind of uh, indicative of the different sort of philosophies between SpaceX and Blue Origin, where SpaceX has test programs that they do out in public. They they fail fast, learn quickly, um, adopt those learnings, and then apply them to their next iteration. And we get to follow along and watch that test program play out in real time. With Blue Origin, they're much more careful. Um, they uh, do a lot of testing internally before they ever launch, and that's why we've seen them have an incredible success rate. Um, and this vehicle, this New Shepard vehicle, has an incredible success rate. Um, and they've been launching, um, they've launched 80 people, over 16 flights, you know, all of these, um, you know, this is a very successful, very reliable vehicle. Um, and it's really the the first step in their larger space ambitions. So the, the you know, the landing technology that they use here, they have applied that to their larger New Glenn vehicle. They've got an even bigger New Glenn vehicle that they've just announced. You know, they want to go, uh, they want to launch space stations. They, they have a lunar lander and contracts with NASA. So their ambitions are large, and this New Shepard vehicle is sort of the seeding of that technology roadmap. Lauren, we mentioned NASA there, and as I said before, we have have indeed seemingly confirmed a new chief of NASA, Jared Isaacman. It's been a bit of whiplash through the process. What is he set to put in place? What is the government relationship with these new private startups? Well, Blue Origin has established itself as a very important partner with NASA. I think, as Chad mentioned, they have a, a lunar lander program, which NASA has contracted them to build for their Artemis program, which aims to send humans back to the moon for the first time in over a half century. So they are very bullish on the moon. I think if you've ever heard Jeff Bezos talk about uh, his uh, space ambitions, the moon is a very big part of that. And also, it's an exciting time for Blue Origin because before Jared Isaacman was confirmed as NASA Administrator, the acting administrator, Sean Duffy, had talked about uh, potentially opening up the competition again for uh, the first lunar landing on the moon. So SpaceX currently holds that contract to land the first humans on the moon for the Artemis program. But because of some concerns about delays in that development process, uh, Sean Duffy he had talked about opening up that contract to see if uh, Blue Origin could potentially move more quickly on their lunar lander program. So I think they're tr going to try and take advantage of that. So it'll be a very interesting time yeah. over the next few years to see if SpaceX pulls ahead, if Blue Origin pulls ahead. So we're really in a, a, a new age space race to get back to the moon. And the race is on for NS37, just one minute, 30 seconds or so before launch. Chad, very briefly, the man management behind Blue Origin, the likes of Dave Limp coming from Amazon, important? Absolutely. I mean, the company was around for two decades and never launched anything. Um, you know, they were in R&D mode for a very long time. I think bringing in Dave Limp, you've seen what's happened. I mean, obviously a lot of work had been done up to that point, but he, Dave Limp is, is a key reason why the company is now launching. It's a key reason why um, we're seeing New Glenn come online, and it's a key reason why they're moving so aggressively on their lunar programs and all these other things. So um, uh, super important from, from my perspective. We have one minute to go, Lauren. What will be doing being done by the astronauts in place right now? Oh, we're on hold uh, again. I mean, 59, oh. 58 seconds to go. Maybe a wind uh, pause for now, Lauren. But what would the astronauts currently be doing? What would the six people who are currently riding 
likely to be doing in this preparation stage? Well, I, I don't know personally, but I imagine their hearts are thumping quite quickly <laughs> and perhaps the adrenaline is pumping through them at this moment. I think truly the, the way that the vehicle is designed is that it's very automated. So they're strapped into their seats. I think they really just are along for the ride for that, that first ascent portion. So I think for them, it's just a waiting game and they're probably, you know, uh, <laughs> gripping the handrails a little tight right now and <laughs> waiting for this hold to pass. I mean, the background of these people, Chad, it is fascinating. As you say, we're now, well, I don't think I'm two degrees separated from Katy Perry, but certainly, apparently, I'm maybe two or six degrees separated from Joey Hyde, who is a physicist and a hedge fund investor from Florida who's on board. No relation to me as far as I'm aware of it. But we do have Mitchie Benthaus, who, of course, is going to be the first person going into space in wheelchair, which is a significant step. We've got German-American aerospace engineer, Hans Konsigman. How are these people taught, ultimately picked, some of them privately spending, some of them backed by government grants? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a, a mix. You know, Blue Origin um, and Bezos himself has, um, you know, um, there's usually an impact angle to, to what they do. Like, there is meaning behind what he's doing. He, The first um, passengers were, um, and I call them passengers because they're really like, um, like uh, Lauren has said, is, you know, it's an autonomous vehicle and they're kind of along for the ride. But um, the first passengers were selected very carefully. You know, they wanted to, to tell the right story. And um, but no, I mean, um, people are they have put down deposits, they've paid their way. They um, there's a long list of people who really want to go um, to space in addition to um, uh, the first person in a wheelchair, which, again, is like really pointing to how accessible spaceflight has become. Um, Hans is a big one for me. I mean, this is he's a SpaceX legend. Um, he was the uh, one of the earliest and most senior employees of SpaceX. He was their VP of build and flight reliability for a decade. Um, so seeing a key architect of SpaceX's success fly on a Jeff Bezos owned Blue Origin rocket is kind of the crossover moment um, uh, that has the industry you know, talking. I think it's really interesting. That is. They'll all become weightless as the spacecraft continues towards its highest point on the brief joyed, jo um, the brief voyage they're going out to the Kármán line. Stick with us, Lauren Grash and Chad Anderson of Space Capital. We so appreciate your time. We'll go back to this launch as and when the clock restarts.